Meanwhile, the public is being encouraged to get vaccinated against the SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. The available vaccines have been proven to be safe and effective in protecting persons from developing COVID-19, in severe forms, complications, hospitalizations and death. It is against that backdrop that the OECS Commission pulled resources for a regional drive. COVID-19 vaccines, a dose of the facts, a production where medical professionals throughout members of the Organization of the Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, speak to their country's COVID-19 situations, the effectiveness of vaccines, among other things. OECS's Program Director of Health, Dr. Avian Bamudu, indicated that OECS member states have been battling waves of infections, and these waves have translated into waves of severe illness, hospitalizations, and deaths. Dr. Bamadou noted, however, where vaccine uptakes are high, the negative impacts of the virus are reduced. Where vaccine rates are high, severe illness, hospitalization, and deaths remain relatively low, even during a COVID spiking transmission. Since the COVID-19 vaccines became available, countries are in a race to vaccinate their population. The more developed countries have greater access to vaccines with levels of vaccine and higher levels of vaccine acceptance. Our world in data provides interactive customized graphics which tracks the vaccination rates by country relative to population over time. Within the OECS, Anguilla is the most vaccinated of the OECS countries with approximately 60% of its population fully vaccinated. This is followed by British Virgin Islands with approximately 45% of its population fully vaccinated. Next, St. Kitts and Nevis with 41% of its population fully vaccinated. Next, Antigua and Barbuda with 37%. Dominica with 29%, Montserrat 28%, Grenada 18%, St. Lucia 16%, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines 12% of their population fully vaccinated. Family physician in St. Lucia, Dr. Tanya destang Bobre, provided an insight into her experience dealing with COVID-19 positive patients. She noted that symptoms among those who were vaccinated were less severe than those who were vaccinated. The family physician also addressed the issue of breakthrough infections and its impact on the confidence of people on the vaccines. Oh, well, I do like to call it breakthrough infections because it, it sort of intimates that we didn't expect infections with the vaccine. At no point in time did anybody say that vaccines would prevent infection. No vaccine does that. We've had, if we've had measles, children who have been immunized with measles, mom and rubella, come up with measles. You know, we've had children immunized with chickenpox who come against chickenpox who come up with chickenpox. So we know that there are chances of infections if even if you're vaccinated. However, what we know is that the vaccines, because of how they work by priming the immune system, the infections are milder, fewer complications, and, and the duration is usually shorter. So we are aware that the COVID vaccine will not work as, as well as, as, as people thought they would. But we're also seeing that the benefits are one, they are less likely to get infected. And if they do get infected, they are less likely to transmit the infection. And if they do come down with the infection, their disease progress is, is milder and shorter. Head of Health Promotions in Dominica, Mignan Rule Schillingford, explained that Dominica has been managing a surge in cases. However, the vaccines have aided in that individuals who have been vaccinated have less severe symptoms, if at all. The Head of Health Promotions in Dominica noting that some vaccination hesitancy is due to the belief that the vaccine may not have gone through the normal procedures due to the short period in which it was produced provided some insight into the development of the vaccines. I want to continue to assure, to reassure the public, you know, of Dominica and also the other Caribbean the OECS countries, is that all of the vaccines that have been given emergency approval or approval, as in the case of Pfizer, 
have gone through these stages of development. And what are the stages of development? One, there's a computer algorithm that is used to model how the vaccine will interact with your immune system. So at first it's a computer algorithm. Then it is, got, it is tested in cells in a culture and that is in a test tube. Okay, so I remember you, I know you remember when you did science at school, there were different things that you would do in a test tube. Um, so that's what happened. From there, when they are satisfied with the information they get, they move to testing on animals. After animal testing, that's when they move to human testing. Now, this human testing is done in three stages where they check the efficacy, they check to see how it works, what's the possible impact on humans, and all of that. And these are done by many different and um, gross different countries. This information, when they are satisfied now, is put together and sent and applied through the different licensure agency. In the case of America, is the Food and Drug Administration. And of course, in other countries, all those who are responsible for allowing this to be used and used. So the vaccines that we are receiving, receiving now that come from WHO, PAHO, you know, and approved by this agency, all of these have gone through this stage of development. As the region continues to fight new cases of the virus, health professionals continue to re-emphasize the benefits of vaccines in combating the COVID-19 pandemic. From the Government Information Service, Humadi Mark reporting.